Hi folks and welcome back to Frugal Radio. In previous episodes of this series we've talked about how to decode local VHF ACARS messages and worldwide ACARS messages transmitted via satellite. Today I'm going to show you how to receive the thousands of ACARS messages that are transmitted every day on the HF bands, also known as shortwave radio. These signals travel thousands of miles and you will often be able to pick up aircraft and ground stations from multiple continents right from your location. Mayday America 953, During the filming of this episode, from my location in Western Canada, I decoded signals from aircraft flying the polar routes, aircraft in South and Central America, the Caribbean, the Pacific and North Atlantic Oceans, and even aircraft flying over the Middle East. I picked up ground signals from the two continental US ground stations, that's San Francisco and New York, along with Barrow, Alaska and Molokai, Hawaii. Additionally, I was able to clearly receive the ground station in Santa Cruz, Bolivia, and on the other side of the Atlantic, the Canary Islands and occasionally Iceland and Ireland as well. All of this was achieved using simple and frugal equipment. An HF dipole I constructed from an old electrical extension cable that was going to be thrown away. I made a video about that which you can see by clicking the link above. A $15 Nualec Ballon that I bought on Amazon, a device that helps reduce noise and match the antenna to the receiver. My regular old laptop loaded with mostly free software. And a software defined radio, in my case the excellent AirSpy HF Plus Discovery that sells for $169. However, I have also enjoyed decoding HFDL using free web SDRs and I'll release a video showing you how to do that at another time. In this video I'm using SDR Sharp from AirSpy.com as the SDR software. You can download it for free from the AirSpy site if you don't already have it on your computer. But you can also use any other SDR software that supports sideband modulation on HF. You will also need a virtual audio cable to send the sound from your SDR software to the decoding software. In this demo I'm using VB cable which is already installed on my laptop as I use it for decoding other forms of ACARS and other data signals as well. Next you'll want to download PCHFDL, software which is available as a free download from the author's site. The free version is limited to 5 minutes of decoding before it times out, which is perfectly fine when you're just beginning to experiment with this mode. If you would like to run longer sessions, you can click obtaining a license from within the software and purchase a license for $35 US by sending a PayPal payment to the author. As always, links for the hardware and software I'm using today can be found in the description below. HFDL stands for High Frequency Data Link and it's another method of transmitting and receiving ACARS data. Aircraft often maintain simultaneous active data communication channels. This means they may be connected to various ground stations via VHF, satellite and HF all at the same time. As a result, you will often see a large number of aircraft connecting via HFDL. Across the world, there are a network of 16 ground stations, all of which are connected to the Central Air Inc. computer network. These ground stations typically operate on multiple frequencies based on the time of day and propagation conditions. I'll show you where to find a list of the frequencies later in this video. If you are interested in DX or searching for signals from far away, these ground stations make excellent DX targets because their locations are known. With the ground stations being spread out across the globe like this, aircraft will always be able to connect to at least one of them. It's interesting to note that because of how HF signals work, aircraft may not always be connected to the nearest ground station. For example, aircraft departing North America and crossing the Atlantic are generally closest to the New York ground station, but they will often connect to Iceland, Ireland, Grand Canaria, Panama or even Bolivia. I've compiled a list of frequencies in use by the entire HFDL system and made them available at my companion website frugalradio.com. If you search HFDL resources, you'll be able to find the post. The page contains the frequencies assigned to each of the 16 ground stations. You can scroll through and choose a ground station to start monitoring. Of course, there are plenty of other HFDL frequency lists online which you could also use. When you tune your software-defined radio, you only need to wait a maximum of 60 seconds, 
If the frequency is active, you'll hear the HFDL data bursts. These have a unique sound and are easy to identify. Notice the pattern in the waterfall display as well. A line extends downwards, creating a data pattern that is visible to the eye. Looking at this display, you can see there is another active HFDL frequency on 13.303 kHz in addition to the frequency I'm tuned to at the moment. Once you have SDR Sharp tuned to a frequency and outputting audio to your virtual cable, you can launch PC HFDL. You'll need to head into the System Options and select Sound Card Selection and make sure that your virtual cable is chosen there in order for the software to receive the audio. Within a few moments, data will begin populating. You can see here the ground station was identified as Riverhead, New York, and I like to check the squitters box. This opens a panel that displays the currently active frequencies for each location. As the ground station continues to emit data, the squitters box will display more and more information. If you're using the free version of PC HFDL, you will see table numbers rather than frequencies in the squitters box display. The black bar along the top shows you the 12 time slots used by the HFDL system. When data is received, you'll notice the patterns in any given slot will change. On the right of that is the primary receive box. It will show you when data is being actively decoded. Below that, you have several options and display settings. If you would like to see all the information being transmitted, you can select more of these, particularly the verbose option. However, I generally leave mine set up like this. To the left of the options checkbox is a flight column. This shows the aircraft call sign or flight ID when a transmission is received from a particular airframe. Here I began a new session at just after 8pm local time. In the SDR Sharp display you can see the active channel I am tuned to, 8957 kHz. You can also clearly see four other active HFDL frequencies on the waterfall. Almost immediately, PC HFDL picks up the ground station, Santa Cruz in Bolivia. That is a distance of over 5,700 miles from my location in Western Canada, and the signal is being received quite strongly. A CRC fail message is displayed in the primary box. This lets me know that a signal had been received but was too weak or experiencing too much fading to be accurately decoded. As more ground station messages are received, the squitter box begins populating with the active system frequencies for each area. A short time later, more data is displayed. Here I can see the ground station acknowledging that an airframe has logged on to the HF network. I could look up the ICAO hex code to find out more, but the flight column soon begins populating. I like to find out where the aircraft are by verifying the information on Flight Radar 24. So I enter Qatar 7 Uniform Yankee and see the aircraft is flying over Maine, New England in preparation for crossing the Atlantic. The next aircraft that had been received was AC or Air Canada 311. I type that into Flight Radar 24 and discover that the aircraft is flying near Calgary, about a three hour drive south of me. The San Francisco ground station would be much closer to it than the Bolivia one, but propagation tonight is obviously favouring the south, all part of the fun and mystery you encounter when playing with HF signals. When I check out the UC1104 call callsign, I find a LATAM cargo Boeing 767 freighter that has just departed Santiago, Chile. That is an incredible 6,500 miles away from my frugal homemade dipole and is an exciting target for me to have received. I can't wait to see where some of these other aircraft are. I check in on the location of Qatari 56 Bravo. It is out over the North Atlantic, about 250 miles east of Boston, Massachusetts, making it over 2300 miles away from me. I am actually having a surprising amount of fun using Flight Radar 24 to visualize the aircraft location, and I like the extra info such as the altitude and photos of the aircraft. Next I find a call sign I don't usually see, AEA-175, which turns out to be an Air Europa Dreamliner that departed Madrid and is heading to Peru. At the moment I received the signal, this 787 was midway across the Atlantic between Western Africa and South America. Exciting stuff! Next up, 
Air Canada 793. Another Boeing 787 Dreamliner, this time nearing the end of its journey and descending into LAX. This aircraft is in range of multiple VHF ACAR sites, but as I have seen over and over again, they transmit data across multiple networks. In addition to this HF ACARS broadcast, the plane might also be transmitting ACARS data on VHF and satellite at the same time. If you haven't watched my videos on decoding these modes, remember to check them out on the Frugal Radio channel under the Monitoring Aviation Communications playlist. I look up a few other received aircraft which happen to be over the continental US, then I pick up Alaska 802, which turns out is over the Pacific about an hour into its journey from Hawaii to Oregon. This is another exciting catch, as that's quite a long distance away. Having been monitoring for around 7 minutes on this frequency, you can see that the Squitters box has now populated with the full list of active frequencies for each ground station. ACARS messages are being displayed in the main window. You can see here an ATIS weather update that had been sent to one of the aircraft and some other ACARS content. This is also a good time for me to point out that the primary display also shows the latitude and longitude being transmitted by the aircraft. And you will also see that there are some undecoded ACARS blocks as well. I decided to retune to the Barrow Alaska ground station on 10.093 kHz. I had never received this station before and wanted to give it a try. Before long, I was rewarded with flight Qatari 67 Lima showing up in the display. As usual, I opened flight radar 24 in order to determine the flight's location. What I discovered was that the flight was flying over northwestern Canada. Routing from San Francisco to Doha, and heading straight north like this meant that the aircraft was on a polar route. As it happens, a lot of Inmarsat coverage disappears in the northern latitudes, so it was interesting for me to see this aircraft embarking on a polar route and showing up via the HFDL system. HFDL may well be the primary method of ACARS communications for this aircraft as it continues its journey. I also had a look at activity in the 13 MHz band. On 13.324 kHz, I could just about pick up the Molokai Hawaii station, so decided to sit there for a while and see if I was able to pick up messages. As you can see from the primary display, different messages were indeed being received, and squitters from the ground station were coming through. I could see flights being listed in the PC HFDL window, and I also observed that there were a number of other ground stations transmitting in the 13 MHz band. If you're a Google Earth user, you can also use Google Earth to plot some of the aircraft positions. Now it doesn't do it quite as well as something like Flight Radar 24 which is pulling in data from ADSB and satellite signals, but using the HF signals that you've received, the flights here can be shown on Google Earth. So to do that we go up to File, Open, and then we go to the directory we installed PCHFDL in. For me I just installed it directly in the C folder and uh, and so now I'm going to click on aircraft KML that will load in the aircraft KML file and if I click on the little triangle that will then populate it so for example if I click on UPS 238 here uh, let's have a look I just want to stop it from zooming. So it's over Quebec right now, UPS 238. We can also see our Canada 56 and FedEx 7 being displayed on the screen, plus this aircraft as well out of, uh, looks like it was uh, probably out of New York somewhere, so it registered into the system. This little yellow line is the track, so if an aircraft has been received for uh, a certain amount of time, it will show a track. So here we have AVA 854. Now AVA 854 where are you? Here you are. Okay, it's all the way down in Colombia. So here we have several uh, Av Avianca, I think is the name of the airline uh, aircraft. So uh, I got one, two, three, four of them that are over uh, Colombia, a couple more down here. And then we have a Land Chile uh, aircraft as well, just showing over the ocean there. And um, yeah, though those are being received obviously from quite a distance. You'll notice that I'm tuned in to the Riverhead, New York. 
uh, frequency right now. So it's interesting that these are coming in strongly and uh, communicating to the New York channel, especially given there's a ground station in Panama just a few kilometers away from them. But that's just part of how uh, the HF signals work. Here we've got another aircraft. You can see the line there coming down through Mexico and into uh, that country is it Guatemala. Uh, here we have uh, Air France over Mexico. A couple of aircraft in the Gulf of Mexico so we can see because of the lines which direction they're heading. So United 284 and Air Canada 993 both heading in a southerly direction. Out over the Pacific and communicating with the ground station in New York we have Alaska 817 and Alaska 885. So 817 is probably on the way to um, Hawaii but I can't be sure without actually checking it. Uh, then we have Alaska 839 here. It looks to be tracking up the coast, so maybe it's on its way up to uh, Alaska, uh, perhaps going up to Anchorage. Uh, what else do we have here? If I just double click, oh, wrong thing. If I double click over here on any of these, uh, it should take me straight to wherever the aircraft is. So we've already seen some of these. Let's see where FedEx 7 is. Okay, so FedEx 7 is over Ontario and uh, there's the line that it's flying right now and what else do we have uh, CE so that's a China Eastern uh, 717 so that looks like it's over Canada it uh, looks like it's a good way up okay so here we're, we're quite far up in northern Canada here so again this aircraft the CS717 is probably on a polar route now if you look you'll see that Grand Station 9 in Barrow Alaska is just here yet this is uh, communicating with the New York station down here so uh, it's just interesting to see how these aircraft end up selecting various uh, position or ground stations when they're communicating. So that's um, that's Google Earth. Uh, there's not a lot more to it than that. I prefer Flight Radar 24 because in Google Earth you don't get a direction of travel unless you have a line. All the aircraft symbols are pointing north, which to me isn't as useful. But if you uh, don't want to be online, like uh, on the internet, then you can just use Google Earth on your computer uh, to pull the data right in from PCHFDL. You just have to make sure that the Google Earth options is checked in the box. That brings us to the end of today's episode. If you've made it this far, well done. It's been a long one. As always, a huge thanks goes out to my faithful subscribers and especially those who have made financial contributions to help support the channel. Please like and share the video where there are others who will be interested in learning more. Thank you for being part of the Frugal Radio family. All that remains is for me to wish you well. Stay safe out there, my friends. This is Frugal Radio, out. <coughs>